the moment. Games are suspended, like in the Premier League, to April the 3rd. So what are the clubs getting up to instead? We can now speak to Gillingham chairman Paul Scally. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. What have you got going on at the moment? You're welcome. So yeah, we've shut the club down. We've only got five staff in and myself and their financial staff talking about how we're going to try and manage our way through the next three or six months, however long this pan pandemic uh, lasts for. Um, and apart from that, we've got our school children here. We have a school within the club. Uh, it's an alternative provision school for children who uh, prefer learning in this environment. So we have 41 children aged uh, 11 to 16 uh, coming to school every day at the moment with 22 staff. Um, unfortunately, one or two of the staff are, are, are self-isolating at the moment, uh, so we're down on numbers. But of course, given that the pitch is not being used for football, and given that we can't take the children to their forest school or their training grounds because of various reasons, uh, we've decided to let the children have their PE and games lessons on the pitch. So, uh, yeah, a rather unique experience for school children to play on a professional football pitch, but given it's just sitting there and doesn't look like it's going to be having football on it for a while, uh, why not? So they're, they're very privileged, they're very much enjoying their experience and, uh, and very happy out there, which is nice. What a lovely gesture, Paul, and a great pitch to get to play on. Now, look, we've talked a lot about the impact on the leagues from a football perspective, getting the season up and running and finished, indeed. But after the news from Barnet, something we really should be discussing is the financial impact. How are you dealing with that? Well, I mean, the reason I've got our financial staff in uh, just this next few days is really to try and work out how long I can make the finances last. Uh, how little we, uh, how much we can pay each member of staff uh, to keep them going, uh, and if we pay them that amount once we worked out what that is, uh, how many weeks or months can that last? I think probably uh, we might be able to last two months. Um, our problem is, as a football club, a lot of our income comes from non-football activities. Uh, we have a very big conference and banqueting centre, uh, Priestfield. Uh, all the events have been cancelled there, so we have no income coming from that. Um, we have an agreement with uh, Medway Council, obviously, to we operate a school here. Um, obviously, if the schools get closed, I'm not sure what will happen about income on the school. Uh, and, of course, with six games still to play at home, uh, if those don't get paid, played, especially in front of crowds, uh, obviously we've got no income there either. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a bit of a doomsday scenario, but we're trying to work out a way of, of giving as many members of staff as much as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can before we run out of cash. Huge sympathy with you, Paul. It's hard to know what to, to say in this circumstance, really. There have been calls for Premier League clubs to help those lower down financially. Do you agree with that? Well, I do. I mean, I've sent a letter to um, the chairman of the Football League uh, for today's board meeting. Um, you know, we're not... Uh, we, 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 we are a family of football. The pyramid of football is very important to everyone. Uh, clearly, League One and Two clubs are very much uh, in a different position to the Premier clubs and indeed Championship clubs to, to a great degree. Um, we don't have many clubs that have very wealthy benefactors in Leagues One and Two. Uh, therefore, they, they, most clubs live from hand to mouth um, every week. Um, and, and the impact really financially, if this goes on uh, for more than a month or so, which it looks like it will do, uh, is going to be significant. And uh, we, 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 we're grateful to the government for the announcements made yesterday. But of course, Clubs taking on debt doesn't really solve the problem because they have to repay that debt. And uh, for me to take on debt or loans uh, is difficult because I don't have any way of actually repaying those loans in the future. So it just passes the problem further down. So, so I would urge the Premier League um, to look at its clubs. I mean, it would cost probably, say, £2.5 million pound a club uh, contribution towards the, uh, the fund. And I think sort of £40, £50 million pound share between uh, 47 clubs uh, in Leagues 1 and 2 would, would probably get them through the next two or three months and uh, that might be the difference between salvation and, and, and not, not salvation. So, so obviously that's where I would hope that uh, some help comes from. One of the most difficult things of course as you say is the not knowing how long is this going to last. What's the time scale before things become desperate for your club? <clears throat> uh, well assuming that we can come to an arrangement with HMRC um, uh, not so much defer uh, payments, but, but, but have, a, have a holiday of uh, not paying any HMRC payments uh, for the next, say, three months. Uh, we can then use that money to keep the staff going. Uh, obviously, staff will have to come to arrangements with their own uh, mortgage companies or banks or, or car loan companies to maybe have a holiday of three months and not paying payments there. 
So if we can give staff enough money that they can buy essentials like food, uh, put petrol in their cars so they can get around, look after their families, um, then I think we can probably last two or three months. Uh, after that, the cash we do have uh, will run out and um, I don't have any solution past, say, two or three months. This will be hard for Gillingham you know, players and staff to hear you saying this, but it, we really appreciate you being honest on this subject, Paul. How are they coping at the moment, the staff and playing staff? Well, uh, all the staff and players are, 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 are told to stay at home and to, to follow government guidelines. and to, you know, They only have to turn on the news on any channel uh, to see how serious the problem is. Um, you know, these are unprecedented times. These are not times that any of us have ever had to deal with before and, and we haven't had time to make any provision. You know, I guess in an ideal world, if we knew there was a pandemic coming in 12 months' time, uh, we would put in reserves and monies to last us for as long as we possibly can. You know, but the reality is, all our income, uh, bar some income we get from Medway Council to help with the school, uh, is stop has stopped. Um, and of course, we don't know what contractual issues are going to be coming with, with television broadcasters about whether whether they'll withhold sums due to the football authorities that all filter down to the football leagues. So we really don't know what the future is, and none of us do, none of us as individuals. So I don't think it's really a matter of just Gillingham Football Club surviving. I think it's a matter of how we can keep as many human beings that work for this club uh, in, 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 in money that they can buy necessities like food, like fuel for their cars, uh, no, things for their children, uh, for as long as possible. This is a human, a human race issue not so much just a football issue. I mean, the football issue is secondary to an extent, um, but of course, this is all about survival. You know, people talk about uh, a war against this virus. They talk about uh, scenes like we've never seen in the last hundred years. You know, none of us have really got the answers. We just have to try and, you know, the one loaf of bread I've got, the one loaf of bread I've got in my cupboard, uh, has to feed as many people for as long as we possibly can, irrespective of what levels of salary they're on, you know, what other liabilities or costs they've got. Um, and I'm sure everyone will be looking at their own personal finances now and saying, well, you know, can I defer my mortgage for three months? Can I defer my car payment for three months? Uh, and that's assuming that we get some light at the end of the tunnel, of course, in three months, which none of us know. Yeah, you're absolutely right to identify all these issues, Paul. But talking from a football perspective again, you're in 11th place currently in the table. Eight points of the playoff places seems like a world away from what we're talking about today, doesn't it? How hopeful are you that the season well, will finish? Yes. Well, as I said to my letter to the league, I think there are two issues. One is the competition, and of course one is financial, which we've already touched on. I think from a competition point of view, uh, I will be devastated if we don't finish it. Uh, my view is that we can play behind closed doors with certain mm -hmm. restrictions in place. Um, ideally, it's not ideal. Obviously, we'd like crowds here, but I don't see that happening in the next three or four months, at the very least. Um, so I do believe that we could play our games behind closed doors, uh, finish the competition, uh, and then we move on. And hopefully, by next August, you know, hopefully, uh, we're in a position where we can play games again, um, if not in front of crowds then, when we have to carry on playing behind closed doors. Uh, but I think it's essential to finish the competition uh, because the alternative to that doesn't bear thinking. I think there'll, there'll be uh, all kinds of challenges, there'll be issues, there'll be arguments. Um, and, and, you know, <laughs> it's a very, very tricky situation because, as you quite rightly say, none of us know how long this is going to go on for or when we can get back to normality. And, and it's possible that may not happen for six to nine months. I don't know. Well, our best wishes to everyone at Gillingham Paul. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much.